Hello YouTube. How are you doing today? <laughs> I want to come through and talk about something a little different. And that is education. You know, and just talk a little bit about how I viewed education and how I view education. All right. So I kind of used to think that education only could take place in the classroom to an extent, or like at least it only counted if it took place in the classroom and you were granted some sort of external validation for that education, like a diploma, a certificate, a degree, you know, things like that. And, but recently, you know, I've been sort of exploring more so, you know, independent study, which for me, honestly, isn't completely a new concept, but I sort of forgot about it, honestly, because there was a brief moment in my life, um, like after I graduated from high school, but before I started college, you know, that summer, right? Um, where I did do independent study. Um, I did independent study and it, you know, ultimately, ultimately, I did independent study over the summer and it ultimately led to me um, starting college with um, a semester's worth of college credit to my name. Okay. But I think I sort of forgot about that. I don't know. I don't know how that how it I did it or how that happened but I sort of forgot about you know that independent you know taking education more so into your hands versus being on autopilot and I won't I'll say in some cases and to an extent I was on autopilot when it came to my education you know I did take a role in it but perhaps I should have taken perhaps a more active role in it and kind of like not just studying what you know professors wanted us to study but also studying things that were um, related more so to the job market and the world like job market outside of academia you know, you know but partially part of my problem was I didn't know what I wanted to do you know you know, throughout college, honestly, I had an idea. I haven't. I had an idea where it was like I wanted to do participate in research, and that's a pretty broad field, a broad job market. You know, you know, and I personally have worked many a job. You know different jobs in different fields, you know, finding out what I want to do, you know, and honestly, I feel like I'm kind of at the point where I think I know, but I'm not quite sure. I still is that like, I don't know, you know, I don't know for sure, you know, and for me, you know, it's a little, you know, I'm a little, you know, I'm getting older, all right, you know, I'm getting older, all right. Or like, I'm kind of like at the point where you're starting to realize you're getting older. You don't have all the time in the world. You know, you kind of need to make a choice. You know, and honestly, I think for me, like I've the, I've contemplated different um, things as far as education are concerned, like, oh, I thought about going to technical school, you know, going back and, you know, because, like, I have, like, uh, two bachelor's degrees, but, you know, I thought about going to technical school. I thought about going back and getting another bachelor's degree, um, specifically in, like, mathematics with an emphasis in statistics, um, <clears throat> so, you know, the stats field seemed like a pretty good field, you know, be a statistician, you know, they seem to get paid pretty good money. 
Um, although I do notice that they want you to know like a lot of different programs. And I'm like, well, I could kind of learn those programs on my own, you know. Um, you know, but I think they want you to have like an, some type of like extensive mathematic mathematics background, which I don't have, right? Um, and as far as like tech school, tech school is concerned, I was thinking about like computer, like computers, like hardware or software or both. And then I was thinking about perhaps just keep going forward and going to graduate school without backtracking. You know? and I was thinking like perhaps either like data science, data analysis, and like one I was one thing I was considering like way back when was going for like Spanish just because I like really like Spanish. Um, thankfully, I didn't go through it through with that idea. Unfortunately, there ain't much money to be had, you know, in academia, because that's probably where I would end up if I did pursue like a master's or a PhD in Spanish. And it, you know, academia, the opportunities are hard to come by, you know, and which kind of sucks for me because you know Spanish is something that I really enjoy. But honestly, I would probably be better off just starting a blog about Spanish, you know, just blogging about Spanish. I probably would get, you know, get further doing that. You know, but I always kind of thought that education had to come through the classroom. You know, even though I have had experiences experiences where it didn't come directly through the classroom, I did it on my own, but for some reason I kind of felt like it kind of had to come through a classroom, you know. And it sort of hit me when I was taking classes, like, these were like independent classes, like at a community center for Spanish, you know, I was taking Spanish classes at a community center. And I was kind of like to the point where I was thinking like, well, I could kind of like mm, sort of do this stuff on my own. And since I'm at the community center, it's not like they're going to give me like a, you know, a degree or a certificate even for completing this. So it's like, mm, I kind of should do this on my own. And also I did like classes leading up to that. Like It kind of cost me a couple of bucks to get to that point to finally for it from for it to click in my head where I was like, hey, I don't necessarily need to be doing these classes. Honestly, I think if the class ain't leading to a diploma, a certificate, a degree, then I probably shouldn't be paying for it. I shouldn't be taking it unless it's free. If it's free, okay, you know. Uh, if I'm paying for it, I, I don't I'm not sure. I don't think so. It, you really have to be giving me something that I find really special, unique, one of a kind that only you can give me or can't be got everywhere. Um, so fast forward to now. Um, like for me, I've been doing independent study recently. Like um, for Spanish, of course. Like for Spanish, I do independent study and I do classes at the local libraries in my area. Like two different local libraries that offer Spanish classes. Um, but they're free, so I'm not paying for them. And I do independent study through a program offered through the library where it's like self-paced and you can sort of just go at your own pace independently and I do it for French as well um, uh, more so just the independent uh, self self-paced uh, learning for French they don't offer French classes in my area just Spanish you know um, but um, I like for me I always not always but I wanted to learn Microsoft Excel and I was looking at different uh, like colleges, both community colleges, private colleges, um, state colleges, you know, that offer continuing educational programs for learning Microsoft Excel. And 
the programs were kind of short. They didn't seem to be really in depth. Or in depth. And I know at least one of them, like the scheduling for the classes, like I think these classes were scheduled on weekdays early in the morning. And I'm like, I gotta work. And I work like a more or less like a nine to five type job. So I was thinking, wouldn't they kind of cater it to the nine to five crowd? No. You know, so I was like, oh man, I'm never gonna learn Microsoft Excel. <laughs> you know, because I kind of was like, for some reason, still kind of feeling like I needed to go through a classroom for, you know, for this. For Microsoft Excel, I was thinking that, you know, not so much for the Spanish at this time, because I was like, okay, I got Spanish, you know, and French. But for the Microsoft Excel, because it was just something that was just so foreign to me, I kind of felt like I needed to go through a classroom to do it. Um, but I couldn't get into a classroom. Um, thankfully, thankfully, you know, it was just money that ultimately I saved because I find that you know found out that I could kind of just learn it on my own as I do with learning Spanish and French just you know learn it on your own where I kind of went through the library and did one program but that was kind of bootleg so I did another program through YouTube but I was like, eh, I think I can get a better quality program. Then come to find out my local library bought like a kind of like a mass subscription to lynda.com. And lynda.com is a company, it's um, a LinkedIn company. You know, it's like the sister company of um, the LinkedIn website, you know, the LinkedIn um, social media, you know, that folks use for finding jobs and whatnot. And come to find out, you know, my library has this subscription to lynda.com that they recently got. And I looked on there, I was like, hey, they offer Microsoft Excel. And then I started doing the program there and learning independently on my own. And feeling like, okay, I didn't, you know, it was kind of like, like, oh, wow, like, I can, like, it's, you know, me kind of like taking an active role in my, you know, education, you know, but also for something that is relevant to the current job market, too, you know? Because the thing is, for, like, Microsoft Excel, it's like, Jobs offer it. Well, jobs want it, but they don't train you for it. I think they expect you to come in to the job with Microsoft Excel knowledge. And so for me, prior to this, I was like, how do you learn Microsoft Excel? <laughs> oh, I, you know, it's a bit of a, it's a bit embarrassing to kind of like have that mindset, but I was like, how do you do this? <laughs> How do you learn this stuff? Right? And I know that everything can't be self-taught. You know, but I say like a lot of things can, though. And that's something that I came to learn. And I think, you know, I'm going to continue on learning because I really want to just learn Microsoft Excel, like the back of my hand, you know, learn all the, you know, what the job market you know, like the in-demand skills for the job market pertaining to Microsoft Excel, you know, like the Microsoft VBA macro, you know, the pivots, um, you know, uh, charts, VLOOKUP, age lookup, like all those things, you know? And to think that I was going to pay for these, like, classes that were probably not going to give me as much education as I should, as I needed to learn this, you know, versus me just doing it on my own. And, you know, it's a lot of information out there. It is. Sometimes I think we don't put two and two together. Like, we quick to Google everything else, but when it comes to, like, education, then we kind of go on autopilot and feel like we kind of need to be in the classroom. But, you know, not to knock a classroom, you know, not to knock the classroom, because I think classroom 
does have its place, you know? But I just think that the classroom isn't the end-all, be-all, right? And especially for some fields where it's like they just want you to have the knowledge. They don't even want to have, see that you have the certificate, diploma, or degree. They just want to, they'll just test your knowledge and see if you know what you claim to know on your resume. Yeah. Um, and as well, um, I kind of, you know, have sort of slowly trying to take a step into like, you know, uh, fostering my math skills. Like I still kind of am surprised about how much I retain because, you know, I did uh, used to kind of be good at math, at least in high school, but I just didn't keep up with it, unfortunately. And that's like a regret that I have from high school, not keeping up with my math. I should have kept up with it and just kept going with it, but I let it fall to the side. <laughs> so that's one thing where I was like, maybe I should go back to school for math. <laughs> Perhaps. Um, but I think I may try like independent study prior to that at least. Um, my library offered some eBooks for free, free of charge you know, that can sort of pace you through learning math. Plus, I think you could do like Khan, Khan Academy for learning math as well, and probably like a lot of other things as well, if, you know, I really want to jump back in and learn math. You know, you know, there's a lot of like those um, websites that are kind of like pace you through self-learning things, you know, because at one point I was thinking about doing like a boot camp, you know, like a coding boot camp or, you know, some type, something like that or a data analysis boot camp. I think for me more so data analysis boot camp because that's kind of like where I, I kind of like see myself leaning towards. Not necessarily data science because I think that's like they want you to have like a strong mathematics background and I just don't think that my math skills are at that point, you know. So data analysis plus I kind of like, you know, I do like, um, you know, the idea of dealing with data and working with data. And it does seem more so related to, you know, what I went to school for. I can kind of make it more so related to that easier than the data science. But I'm open to both, though, honestly. But I just think that data analysis may be the easier path for me to go down. And it may be the more interesting path as well. But yeah, you know, so currently it's kind of like Spanish, French, Microsoft Excel, and math. And guess how much money I had to pay to learn all that stuff? You know, no money. Like I just went through, you know, either you can go to the internet or go to your local library or do both. You know, that didn't, it didn't cost me anything, like, well, taxpayer money, but, you know, that was going to be taken either way it go. Mm -hmm. But, of course, you know, I don't totally knock classes, of course, you know, I don't, but it's just, ultimately, education doesn't always have to come through a classroom, you know. And again, before you go to school and invest in education, just make sure you think, you know, a lot about it. Think long and hard, hard about it and understand the investment that you're making before you do it. And understand, you know, what you expect to receive from that investment. Because unfortunately, I didn't think about it like that. Because again, I was like a you know, 18 years old, like, what the heck did I know? <laughs> Thankfully, I didn't get, you know, didn't get got too bad as far as, like, student debt is concerned. It's, like, something that, you know, I could see myself paying off, you know, b before I die, <laughs> you know, way before I die, thankfully, you know. Um, um, but <laughs> student loan debt is a whole nother video that I could talk about. But I'm going to bring this video to a close. I meant, that didn't mean to go on for this long. But, 
you know, if you got to the end of this video, thank you very much. Thank you for watching. And, you know, leave your comments. Let me know what you guys think. Until the next video, adios and goodbye for now.